issue U.S. law enforcement is grappling with is uh, the drone. Uh, late last month, a recreational drone, as you may recall, uh, crash landed on the White House lawn. Well, his operator said he lost control of it. Then there's a concern that hobbyists are flying their little aircraft into commercial airspace. One was recently spotted by a jet pilot approaching Los Angeles International Airport, LAX. The drone was hovering at 4,000 feet, folks. They're not supposed to be up that high. Well, these incidents raise a specter of what drones could be used for in the wrong hands. Laura Jacobs with the Society on Social Implications of Technology. Uh, I, I got to think that this is a really big threat here, Laura. You know, every new technology is perceived as a threat. And what happens is that we as a society figure out how to regulate it and how to integrate it into our culture and and, you know, how to turn it from something really scary into something that's every day. But, Laura, you know, I, I can go right around the corner from this studio. There's a hobby shop right around the corner, and they sell a ton of drones. I can pick up a drone right now. One of our cameramen has a drone with cameras on it. Who knows what else you could put on these things? How do you regulate something that's already in the hands of the public that's using them? You know, well, a lot of these regulations, you know, first of all, our legislators need to decide what these kinds of regulations should be. You know, we're still waiting on the FAA to come out with regulations for commercial drones, uh, but there are rules about how high hobby drones can fly. It's about, you know, 400 feet, um, which is quite modest. And there are rules about, you know, every, you know, if you are just piloting a hobby drone, you need to keep it within line of sight. Uh, these are quite reasonable regulations. The thing is that they're not enforced on a technological basis. Uh, and I guess that's just my point. There are a lot of things. We have a lot of rules in this country that don't seem to be enforced. We have the <laughs> Secret Service that can't even keep someone getting into the East Room of the White House for crying out loud when you already have drones that are out there. I don't see anything that anybody can do to enforce these kinds of rules and regulations that apparently already exist. Well, there are some technological fixes that could be added. Um, you know, so after that White House incident, something that happened very quickly uh, was some of these manufacturers started turning on geofencing. Mm -hmm. They can prevent any drone with up-to-date firmware from entering, say, White House, the, this airspace over the White House, or getting within a few miles of it. They can also prevent uh, a drone from flying into the airspace of a commercial airport. Um, I think this is this kind of technology is going to become much in you know, much more greatly used. Um, some other things that could be done is similar to the way, you know, when you buy a cell phone, it can always be traced back to you. Something similar could be done with drones to prevent people from, you know, flying a drone, crashing it in, doing damage, and then, you know, running away and not taking responsibility. Well, here's my, my point, and, and that, that all may be well and good. You know, I, I don't want to put too much heat on you, Laura. I, the, the point of it is, you know, I, I, some folks may not like this, but why don't you just ban drones completely? What are, what are you doing with a drone? You, you, you put a drone up there with a, with, a, with a camera on it or something, so you're looking into somebody's house, you're hovering over the White House, you're doing something crazy. I mean, what, why do you need these things? You why? Know, in, in the United States, we take a very uh, loose approach to regulation. Something needs to pose a serious danger before we ban it outright. Uh, millions of drones have already been sold. You know, the ship has sailed. You know, my, my producer just said something in my ear that's so true. He, what he didn't mention, though, is he's, in movies, movie companies are using these things. In fact, I think another network had, they were showing some lava flow over the, the, the Pacific, uh, the Hawaiian Islands or something like that. I mean, okay, that's all good for National Geographic. So you have certain people, in fact, Amazon wants to use it, maybe drones to deliver pizzas. I don't know. <laughs> the point of it is uh, you get companies that, that, that use these things, and oh, fine, okay, let them have them. But the average person, why? I mean, the average per so um, the average person has had access to RC helicopters, RC planes for decades. This isn't new technology. If there's anything that's new, it's the commercial availability of just sticking a camera onto uh, a copter that's remotely piloted. This is yeah. this is really not new technology. Yeah, yeah. Look, you know, I didn't mean to be too hard on you. You're not the one that's flying drones <laughs> over the White House. But you know, I really want to thank you for coming on and giving us some insight into this whole situation of drones. Anyway, thank you so much for being with us. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. And when a rise review continues, we'll look into why some people reject something that could protect their health as well as the health of others. We'll be right back.